This is a bop. I love this song. It really is. Is that what the kids say? Do they say it's a bop? I was with you when you wrote it. You were you were with me when I wrote this song? Yes. You're you're talking about um Symphony Number no. 25 by Mozart? Well, yeah, yeah. So you were you were with me when I wrote Symphony Number no. 25 written by yeah. Amadeus Wolfgang, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart? Yeah. We haven't you and I haven't talked about our past lives. That's another episode. It, it, I was going to say, cause this, this feels weird. This feels strange to say that we have had a past, in my past life, I was, so would that, who would that make you if I was Amadeus? I don't know. I only know that you were Amadeus and that I knew you. I'm still channeling. You're putting it together. Yeah. I it. had a, fl a flash of vision. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, Just because it's been a day. Let's secure this perimeter. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. No, this is Jillian. This is happening. Of course, Jillian from the Hamilcast is here and she's amazing. We will be putting that quote up when it's time to secure the perimeter because it is near time. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chaos Twins. Welcome back. Ah! To yeah, the, the alternative to the Mozart is me just singing, screaming. screaming. That I could be your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, the theme that's song. not a good theme <laughs> song. <laughs> no. I'm not I, warm, but I think that that could work. Let me tell you, even if you were warm, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's not me being mean. That's, it's just, it is, that's a lot. That's, are you going to vomit? Are you vomiting? I'm aghast. I'm aghasting. I'm aghasted. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah guys welcome it's good to see everybody or not Hi, everyone um guys are we a podcast or a talk show exactly exactly we're, we're a talk show. i because a podcast to me is something very different you like, don't get faces you don't get faces necessarily i mean i guess you maybe maybe like we're a we're a you know if, if you want to call us like a podcast with a visual component but like like for instance we have jillian here um <laughs> Jill, like the, the amount of work that Jillian does to get her podcasts off the air, you know, Ted and Michael, the Hamilcast, True Crime Obsessed, all these podcasts, that's a lot of work. We just show up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like we just, I just put on a little Lady Danger Mac lipstick and I show up. You show up. Tea and then we sign on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Javon, I think you're right. We still got to get Javon on the show, by the way. Yeah, Javon, Javon ish Ish. Somebody call Anthony. So, <laughs> I don't I don't like that you're on a first name basis <laughs> with Anthony Anderson. I don't like that. Somebody call Anthony. <laughs> we got a show, another show. It's a talk show ish. Talk show ish. Black ish people. <laughs> Gross. Oh my God. Um Sasha, how's your week been? It's been busy. Busy. Yeah. This is my theory about this week that Definitely. um when the pandemic hit. Yeah. Everybody was like, okay, I'll just sort of wrap up what I was doing and then deal with the impending doom. And then I think people like had like, there was like this lull of like, just survive, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I think maybe like in May ish, people started to say, well, I can't just sit here. It turns out I've watched right. everything on Netflix. And so I think. And then, of course, June was like a huge, like revving up of a lot of activism and awareness. And, and I think everybody got their act together by like, this week, mm -hmm. like, they, like we'll do it the last week of July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so literally every area of my life, whether it's teaching, like uh, summer camps, um, um, I'm doing stuff with Equity Council. Everything is happening this week. This week now. This is the week. This, this is the week. I agree. I, I've had I've had a lot of like a lot of the hustle stuff that that I've been like planting the seeds of since March is definitely blossoming this week and like a lot of like there's a lot of running around there's a lot of running around there's a lot of craziness running around uh, your apartment because you we, we still can't re nothing's really open so you're just like yeah nothing is open let's be <laughs> and, and here's let's let's talk about that let's talk about that for a second because nothing is open in america <laughs> oh. however if we're to just go right across the pond we would see he's uh, angry about this thing guys i am so mad, guys, about this. that we have yet to get 
our stuff together. It's so easy. Patrick Dempsey, yet again, wear a mask. Do it. He Just, looks great. He looks excellent. He Look looks at the guy. Do you understand how much it's going to bring out your eyes if you just put on that? You set mask? it off. You set it off with the little trim there. Yeah. And like, and he's got the silver fox thing going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, it's really good. Don't be like this guy. This guy's not wearing a mask. Same James Barber Hart's not wearing a mask. Joshua Lyman, not wearing a mask. President Bartlett, not, not wearing, wearing a mask. The president is not wearing a mask. The president is not. He's not. He's not wearing a I don't see it. I don't see it. That's the wrong. There we go. I don't see him. I don't see a mask. It's hard. it's hard to figure out. Yeah. There it is. Mask. I'm mad about that. I know. I know. I'm mad about that because. I know you are. But but you know what? We will get there when we get there. Uh, I see some. I see some. Some friends in this. In this. In this conversation. Tommy <laughs> Brooks. Fergie. Yo, Fergie. We got people. A lot of people commenting that are rude. <laughs> that are rude people. That are, in, that are in this chat right now. It's gross. I just want to sing a song about friends. Do you want to sing a song? Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't want to, you know. It's so a funny. friend's a friend forever. If the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never. Because the welcome will not end. And though it's hard to let you go. In the Father's hands, we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. <laughs> yes, he gets it. No, no, I brought that up because Groot doesn't get it. Groot gets it. Groot, let me tell you what Groot doesn't get. Listen, I just want to say that's what happens when you grow up in Georgia listening to Christian pop music. Listen, and that's great. <laughs> Fergie, Fergie, Fergie asked the most important question of all time. <laughs> Again, every time that this show happens, we get very confused as to why we have it. <laughs> why, why is this show a, an actual thing? I stopped at my... So, so <laughs> what did somebody ask us earlier? So was your, somebody asked... What was your 2020 resolution? What was your New Year's resolution, guys? <laughs> was it Javon? Is either Javon yeah, or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, Michael? Yeah. And I, I don't know, but I'll tell you that the one that happened, my uh, pandemic resolution was to stop asking why. Don't ask why. Doesn't matter. It's when it's given, receive. Just take, you better take what's coming. <laughs> this is great. That's us. This is great. That is us. So we do have a special guest coming up, uh, okay. you know, in in, in, a, in a couple minutes. But we do have we have time to kind of get a bunch of segments in and talk about things. A lot a lot of things going on in the world that we want to we want to talk about before our lovely guest comes in and and, oh, yeah. and does his thing. Um, you know, where do we, do we want to start with a little a little perimeter check? Since especially because we got to, we, got we, to. we must. All right. We let's, must. Perimeter check. Graphic because that you know we got new graphics by the way. Graphics that fill the hey! screen. Fill the screen. Screen is filled. Welcome to perimeter check. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Where you gotta secure the perimeter. Do you know what I mean? How do you maintain your boundaries against social media trolls and NYC water bugs? It's well system systemic racism and glaring socioeconomic inequalities exacerbated by a global pandemic. What took you by surprise this week? How did you do it? Sasha, how did you do it? How, Listen, no, how, how did you do it? I'm going to tell you how I did it, okay? Because my perimeter this week was uh, severely accosted by the heat in New York. The awesome. heat. The heat in this city is oppressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you, Monday, Monday, I looked at that forecast and I said, I'm not leaving. Yeah. And I'm blasting this AC. Now, yeah. in my process of securing this perimeter of my apartment, yeah. I did not secure the perimeter of the globe because of global warming, but you know, it's just like, where does it end? Where does it begin? Where does it end? I got it. This heat is oppressive and rude. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that like, honestly, it's like, you know, some people have dogs, some people have cats and I have this AC and I feel very passionately about its presence in my home. I love that. I love that. I think that's very, that sounds like a very secure perimeter to me. Um, and yes, Javon, Javon is very surprised. 
<laughs> Isn't that terrifying? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's that. That's what we want to imagine. Nope. Stop it. I can't stop now. It ha- You know, it's it's out there again. I mean, and let's bring it back in. Do you know what I mean? I can't. But, but then let it out later, at a at a point. You know, later in this podcast. Ooh, Conroe Brooks says it is 108 degrees in Vegas. Conor, I don't. God bless. God bless Vegas, and God bless you, Conroe Brooks. Conroe Brooks, by the way, one of one of the best men I know. Uh, you know, you love that guy, Philip Company. Great guy. Um, Shut up, Javon. Yeah, Javon. Everyone's see. Everyone's talking stuff today. Everyone's talking smack. They only wants to come because you know why? Because it's hot. That's why. Because it's hot. Because people are too hot. Yo, let me tell you the other thing. I was on the subway. You know this yeah. story. I was on the yep. subway. It's very yep. hot. Yep. And the train, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It looked like something was under the train, and I really hope that it wasn't a body. Yep. But, um, something got stuck under the train. We had to stop. We had to walk to the front of the train. But I was on the car that had, like, a lock. Like, there was actually no emergency exit in my door. <laughs> like, we couldn't yeah. get to the front of the train. Yeah. And I found myself trapped with hot, pandemic-ridden New Yorkers. Yep. Yep. That was a very scary moment. That's a lot. That's that's pretty, especially during a pandemic. That's really traumatic. And then we heard the AC go off, and, and yeah. <laughs> literally the whole train goes, "Oh, yeah." That's All right. Uh, perimeter. My perimeter. So, so I actually there was I had to secure. So I actually uh, was able to hang out with you and uh, Mr. Javon McFerrin and Mr. Michael Lavoye uh, this past uh, this past weekend, uh, and we we had a blast. But like it was. It, there was a moment where I really had to secure because we were sitting, we were right in front of Scientology Pizza or Pateria Pizza. It's really called Scientology Pizza. Basically. Basically. Because uh, it's right next to the Church of Scientology. And we were getting a slice and we were sitting on the Richard Rogers. Um, and before Sasha, while Sasha was stuck on her train, mm. me and, jo- and Javon, chime in on this. Uh, me and Javon and Michael Lavoie were sitting there and a, and a gentleman, uh, and I, I, a woman who I assume was his wife, um, came in front of the theater and planted a, a flag that was, I guess, I, th- I would say the dimensions of this flag had to be like eight foot by like three foot. Mm-hmm. says Trump 2020 um, saying like blue lives matter, um, you know, at people who pass by. Fergie, Fergie is trying to call me out for things. Fergie, I said that I didn't want people in my home. I don't want people in my home. I'll hang out. In fact, Fergie, shut up because I'm, I'm hanging out with you tonight. So you're a garbage human. You can shut up. Okay. <laughs> but but uh, this man was like being real tight. And like, first of all, why are you flying a Trump flag in front of the Richard Rogers Theater? What are you trying to prove? Second of all, this man, the way that this man was yelling at his wife, um, like ridiculously, thank you, Aaron Albano. Yes, wait, but asthma. Wait, but asthma. Exactly. I don't like I don't like people coming in my home right now. I will go outside where the air is breezy, but not inside. Um, but this man was just causing a whole row. So like that actually made me uncomfortable. And then see, I don't let's not the people, let's ignore the comments because Fergie is being <laughs> ridiculous. Also, I just want to point out that Fergie, me and Sasha are doing a panel next week, and now I am like terrified to do a panel with Fergie. And I just want everyone to see this because Fergie is like, he's a problem. He's a menace. And I, you shouldn't trust him. But um, point being, I also, I, so that was one moment. And then I had to, and then I biked to the Richard Rogers and my wife got really worried that I had biked because she's like, Hey, rem- please remember that you're a black man wearing a mask. So like, yeah. So those moments where I was just like, Oh yeah, that's me. So how did I cope with that? How did I secure my perimeter? I went on an app. And I created this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that feels really secure to me. That feels super secure. I don't know if you guys can tell. That's a mashup of my face and Nicolas Cage from Con Air. I think this is a, an important time to point out that you have to be aware that when you secure your perimeter, you might be making other people unsecure yeah this is not this is not supposed to make anyone feel secure i just want to um acknowledge people watching that might be incredibly disturbed yeah 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 yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
two Knicks, two Knicks, one cage. Yikes. Yikes. You know yeah. what I mean? But after doing so I've actually been going through and making uh, GIFs or GIFs. I never know how to pronounce this. But of all my friends, I've, I've made several of them. And I, I just send them to them without any context. In fact, I sent Sasha like three in a row. You know, with no con, like no warning, no context. It was upsetting. Uh, Aaron Obano saying he's shocked that I haven't made one of Iron Man. I have. I have made Justice Moore into Iron Man. I made Fergie into the Hulk, and that was pretty much the most accurate one that I've done so far. I got, um, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta get out of here. This is going down a, a real bad hole. And, uh, that is how I brought joy back into my life. Was the, wow, 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 the, the wow, wow. <laughs> Listen, um, we're gonna move on to blow bank. We're gonna move on. We're moving on. We're moving along, Nick. Move on. Moving on. Like some people might have to figure out what their bloping is for what you've just done to them with these gifs, gifs, these gif gifs. Yeah. Because gif, it doesn't feel like a gif. Skippy peanut butter. All right. Black hoping. Karen touched your hair again. Karen said something slick. How did you deal with it? How did you deal with it? As a as a as a human of color, how did you deal with it? I'm gonna tell you. What? Nick. Yeah, continue. We talk. <laughs> I'm here. Have you bloped this week? Have you had to bloat? Yeah, yeah. Are you? I, I, I definitely had to cope while cope while black. And a bloat, and a bloat is when you have to um, you have to go on vacation. You have to get out. Get out. Literally, when you have to get out. Like the, like the move. Get out. Get out. As a person of color, or a black person, please get out. That's how did you bloat? Bloping this week, um, I'll tell you, like, I've been in a lot of spaces that are trying to do really good work, and they're mixed spaces, meaning that there's, um, like, people of all backgrounds, um, but there's been a lot of, like, pushing Black voices to the forefront and uh, giving platform, and that's what this is sort of born out of as well with Broadway World, and a lot of it is great. I think um, this is partly perimeter, partly bloping. It's just, like, having to really, like, look at what you're getting into and like the platform you're getting and having really important conversations with people. And I think um, a lot of well-meaning people um, are, can either get really aggressive, like that hyper, hyper progressive, hyper, hyper woke white person that actually starts speaking over you and you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are we doing again? Like, who are we centering? What are we listening to? Who's speaking? Are you speaking for me? What happened to my voice? I thought I was talking. Uh, whatever. Um, so there's that, and I I don't even I'm not gonna attribute like or name names or do anything like that. I just think that there's like it's we're in a tough situation. It's a tough time. It's a tough time for everybody. So part of my bloping has been to seek out spaces with black people. Um, my dear friend Dion used this term kitchen table. She was like, like looking for the black kitchen table versus like the white kitchen table. And she was like, I don't know what's going on over at your table, but I know what my black kitchen table is. And so I've just been seeking like truly um, spaces with people of color just for reference and a lot of like older as well, like valuing the voices of people who've been through waves of this, um, many more waves than I have or you have or even our younger generation. I just think like building community like intergenerationally with black people and with women, specifically black women, I've just found a lot of re refuge in those places and a lot of grounding yeah, and yeah. a lot of really, really good advice. Um, so I know it can feel very overwhelming, particularly for people of color right now, because there's a lot that we want to get done. There's a lot we want to do, and we're being given a lot of opportunity. And I think sometimes we have to do our own censoring and our own like sort of background check. <laughs> work and that can be really overwhelming and it's just necessary and i think other people you know allies so to speak are trying to figure out how to get in and sometimes it's, it's people are like shut up and then some people are like speak up and i know that that's really confusing so i've just been like seeking voices of wisdom and i think it's always better to as an ally to ask way more questions than you you should be asking way more questions you should all you should start and end with a question at all times at all at, at, at which times, Sasha? All of them, all you the know, times, all, all the times time. that there are. It's so interesting just to affirm everything that you just said. Um, you know, one of the things that me and my therapist have been talking about this week has been risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a lot of regards in my life, I'm very risk averse. There are things that 
I will always try to find the right thing to say as opposed to the true thing to say. Oof. And that is a conversation that I think definitely finds its way into exactly what you just talked about, which is it's not it's not anything against any allies, but I think that part of the growth in that is you're trying to you're trying to empathize and affirm um, with what has just been said. So you're looking for that thing that shows them that you are on their side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that in itself is self-serving. That's mm -hmm. actually not empathy. That is actually you showing someone that you are on their side mm -hmm. and can very quickly backfire. Yeah. Um, and I think that exactly what, you know, what I'm hearing and what you just said is just, if you're gonna do that, you have, there's a certain amount of vulnerability and of making space for the not knowing that you have to be okay with. Because as soon as, as soon as you try to have those answers, yeah, we feel pushed back. And especially, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, the, you know, I, I've said this before on the show, but I will say this to the day I die. Um, I think that there is no demographic, I would argue there is, or there's a very few other demographics who have had to deal with this very thing than women of color and black women. Mm -hmm. I think that you all specifically have had a, a lifetime's lifetime of experiences with this thing. And I think that we have to understand that and, and be real about that. Because I think that's the other part. I think that that actually happens within our, you know, you talk about looking for the kitchen table. I would say that happens within our own community as well. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm just, I, I completely, I completely agree. I completely I think agree. It's, you know, I, um, I love, I love reaching out to women and I love reaching out to something about women. Um, because I think that we are used to ask, we're used to waiting and making space for other things. And so actually when we get into our own spaces, I do feel like people ask more questions and people listen more and reaffirm more. And it actually, it's sort of, a, it's a very special place that I, I very much appreciate. And you know, it's a space that I find myself in as a black woman, as a black cis woman, I should say, that is, a, it's a very specific space, um, but I really enjoy it. And I, I think, you know, there are probably be people seeking refuge in other spaces that would be interesting to, um, but I, I, I really value it. It's something very special. And I do think there's a lot to be learned from it. And a lot of it comes from just saying less. <laughs> On that note, do we have a tag him today? We got a tag him. Tag him. Tag someone who is doing the work, activism, community service, arts and action, and or otherwise, who is making their corner of the world a better place? Who we got? Who's doing that right now? Got the beautiful, the incomparable, the okay. Valencia. Hey girl. Hey girl. There it is. There it is. There it is. Huh? Tagged. Tagged. Look, she matches our, our colors as well. Yeah. She does. She's in the color. She's in the color scheme. So why are we, ta why are we tagging Valicia? Which what, okay. I mean, so we're tagging Valicia for uh, two different areas of work that she's been working in. Um, she's been in some of these rooms that I'm talking about. Valicia Lake was also the our Diana Ross in Motown, the mm -hmm. musical. Uh, she's a beautiful, beautiful Diana, um, and she actually was diagnosed with cancer while we were in uh, performances and sort of sparked this work. Um, I'll read a little bit of what she sent us. Since being diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2013, I've used my voice to bring awareness about the disease and to make sure that women of color, particularly black women, had representation in those spaces. When I was first diagnosed, everywhere I researched only spoke about white women in their 50s. There wasn't a space for me that looked like me, so I spent the past seven years creating a space by sharing my journey and making sure that young black girls always have a roadmap in order to navigate this deadly disease. Um, she's given us some resources about ovarian cancer um, that I will throw up in the chat. That sounds so gross. I'll throw up in the chat. I'll actually yeah. do that in a little bit. I just want to get to some other work that she's been doing mm -hmm. um, just to keep going. And she, also, she's been doing some lovely, lovely work um, around free grace. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are aware, but there is a young woman named Grace who has been um, put into juvenile detention for not doing her homework. 
Um, and there's a lot of conversation around looking at, that we look at black children and we judge them um, as more mature or older. They're more likely to be tried as adults, more likely to be given harsher sentences and sort of treated with a maturity that we don't really require from um, maybe some of their white counterparts. Mm -hmm. I'll read what she has shared. Uh, my journey with Free Grace started on July 15, 2020 by reaching out to Jody Cohen from ProPublica. Um, after reading her story, I was inspired to send her a video of encouragement so that she could always have a place to come to that will remind her of her greatness. Some of my fellow actresses, other lovely ladies, Tracy Beezer, Zakia Young, Dana Marie Ingram, shared their thoughts of encouragement in that video as well. Um, she's corresponded with her mother a few times, but her main goal was to make sure that Grace knew she had support, um, and she's using her platform, Valicia is, to amplify Grace's story. You can read more about uh, Grace's story. I will throw up some more um, ref, uh, resources, but where you can also find these resources will be on our um, launch, newly launching, <laughs> well, it's been around, but we haven't like yeah. publicized our uh, social media account. I'm going to start putting some of these resources up so that you have them with what we're talking about. Um, there's also, you have the ability to write to Grace. Um, she is still in detention. It's been, I think, over three months. Mm -hmm. um, she's 15 and um, is just going through a tough time like all of these young students are. I don't know if any of you work with students, but this is an, if it's a hard time for us to navigate, it's an incredibly hard time for these kids, like, you know, students to navigate. They've been, their whole lives have been disrupted. And I think she's just, instead of being offered support, she has been thrown into uh, juvenile detention. Mm -hmm. And um, people are writing, are petitioning, there's petitions to sign. I've had some of them up in my profile. Um, Valicia is definitely pushing this. So you should follow Valicia and I will put this in here. Yeah. And Valicia, I'm gonna flash Valicia Great. right there. So that's her Instagram handle, give her a follow. For yeah. sure. She is she is one of the, the warmest hearts that we have working in this industry. Um, just an incredible, incredible, incredible woman. And on that same tip, um, you know, go off when you can, when you get a chance. <laughs> you know, just give this one a follow. There they are. Give, just give that one a follow. Give that a give that a click, you know, see see what that does for you. There um, they are. You know, there they are. But yeah, Valicia, my favorite, um, not my favorite, because it's not a, it's not a necessarily a happy memory, but uh, she, so we had a, uh, a brother in our community who passed away, uh, was it, it was last year, Eric Lamont yeah. Summer. Yeah, wow. Um, and he, if you guys know of Eric or knew of Eric, Eric uh, is and was one of the best performers that we've ever had on these stages yeah. uh, and, and would let you know it. <laughs> and um and he um he is he's just a it, but, but Valicia um along with so many others organized a wonderful tribute to him um this past uh fall uh and it was really just beautiful and it, it yeah it was it was really really spoke to not only who Eric was but who she is as well which has always been kind of this amazing person um yeah she's incredible and she really speaks to again what we like to promote is artists who are doing great work on stage, but also just doing so much beautiful community work off stage. Yeah. Um, it's really worth really getting into some of these really great artists who have incredible platforms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so guys, we, we have a guest today who, you know, this is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> I think we both have a, a an infinite love for this man, uh, and I and and I think so many people understand why uh, he is, you know, obviously the director of the thing with the stuff and the things, the Hamilton. But I mean, this is that that is the tip of the iceberg for this guy. Um, he has, um, you know, he recently had the wrong man at MCC uh, in the Heights, uh, Freestyle of Supreme, the documentary which is on Hulu right now. Um, we are just so. Honored to have him in the space with us. Hey. PK. Yeah. Uh, there he is. Flipping his there camera. He there he goes. It's hard yeah, to figure it out. Work. We it did this. Work I, I mean, we, do, we got tech. Don't worry. We got tech. We can turn it to the side if you Done. want. Done. Look at you. Center. Yeah. Okay. Which way do yeah. I do it? Do You're it this wrong. way. Whatever way you want. Tommy wants everyone to know he doesn't have Instagram. <laughs> See, I didn't say it. Yes. I didn't I, say it. I wanted to, that's why I'm here. I want to be, I, I'm here for that. 
lot of people have been asking, and we just want to put it out there first of all. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Should yeah, we make I'm sure? It I'm sure lots of people. I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> They're looking for you. They There's, really are. What's ten people less than a dozen? That's how many people are asking. That's not <laughs> <Yeah. one>. guys. <laughs> Dude, how are you, man? It's Am been I on delay? Can you hear me okay? I feel like I no, broke this. Hear you. <laughs> now nah, we can hear I you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. This is. <laughs> I got to start over. I'm starting over. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most Tommy Kale thing in the history. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> like it's so. Let me tell you how. For those of you who know this man. <laughs> He fed ultimate. Literally just I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he said he had 23 minutes. He went 23 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? No, I can't. it was really, that was terrifying. What was happening before? I'm just getting <laughs> yelled out about Instagram, but I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> It's not, is, not what I'm I I'm really so dead. Oh my god, I was I'm I'm crying right now, dude. I'm crying. Oh, dude. Yeah, I can't even see. I put on oh man, oh, okay. Man. All right, okay, so let's let's start again. Still TK, he's still here. How are you? How you doing? It's been a minute. It has, it has been too, it has been too many minutes. Um I'm doing I'm better increasingly as as my stream yard cred goes right through the proverbial <laughs> floor. Dude, love it. Love I hope it, this, I hope everyone's buying stock in StreamYard yesterday. <laughs> today. Y'all, is I if I had known, I would have been all over Zoom. Like I would have. Streamyard. And somebody said the wood that they're using to build all those outdoor spaces for restaurants. You yeah, know, like New York is like everybody's got like planks, like plywood. It's like whoever is supplying this is really doing it, really making some money in the pandemic. Making it happen. Making oh it happen. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Hey, y'all. How okay. are you? He's good. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm the two of you together. This is terrifying, right? <laughs> it's bad. Terrifying it's was your word. That's not the word. I was going to say exhilarating. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, really. It really, really. It's terrifying really, for me, honestly. It's yeah. It's really scary. And and I was thinking about it, Tommy, because because I was coming into the cast as Sasha was leaving, so we didn't have to deal with this. But no. like now, they've put us together and like, do you know what I mean? Like, you, it, you realize that? Like the only, the most we've been able to come together is during a pandemic. Like they won't let us be in the same space. Until and now. By day, I mean them. Yeah, them. General them. <laughs> yeah, General. No, I, I like that, you know, four years ago, uh, as you walked by each other in the stage door, you thought, I'll meet you online. <laughs> See, Four years from great. today. Yeah. Four years from today. Yeah. I'll, see you. <laughs> I'll see you. Oh yeah, man. And here we yeah. are. I'm very happy you two are united. Oh yeah. No. Happy. Happy to. Happy to be united. Happy, happy to be united with you. Yeah. Um, you know. Happy I mean. Listen, man. So yeah. I mean, look. You are obviously just just a, a gem of a human being and such an incredible artist and and like, you know, person. Um, You're nice to say so. Like, no, but uh, well, and we were so we were so excited to get you on because you, I think the general if there was a general theme of your visit today, one of the things that I think we have always appreciated about you um, is your sense as a as a director and as an artist of making everyone feel seen, mm -hmm. and especially right now um, when you know I think so many people are fighting to be seen. I think that the chance to have a conversation with you about what it means. At, in your career to like, ha, you know, how how you do that. Cause that's, that is not something that every, as people, you know, all of us who have worked several production contracts now, been fortunate enough to work several produ production contracts now, that's not always the case. But in a, but in a, in a Tommy Kale room, we all know, Tommy knows our names, Tommy knows what's going on. And that that's a special thing. And he wants to know what you have for lunch. Yeah. So no. Tommy does, does want to know that. I like that I, the standard is he knows your name. Like <laughs> what kind of business are we in? Well, this it's is what like, I'll say. Don't be a terrible person. Like, start there, everybody. <laughs> but it's really true. Honestly, you're like, what? Tommy, what? <laughs> but like, yeah. What I want to say, though, I, so I've worked with you on Hamilton. I worked with you on Fosse Verdon. And I will say, as a dancer in both of those things, not only, like, you just, 
even in the movie, I see us, like I see the ensemble, I see the movement happening and Fosse Verdon, like I don't have this feeling which I've had with other productions and other things where you just feel like, oh, we're literally in the background. So I think you just, there's a way of like an appreciation you have for the whole. And we just kind of want to know what that is for you as both a director, like what the value of that is as a director, but then also just like, I have a feeling it flows from your person. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've been thinking about this and obviously I've been doing, you know, a lot, like just a, a lot of assessment and, and thinking deeply and asking questions and trying to listen as, as best I could to, to like what comes up when you're still, right? When you're, when you're actually not working and and yet when you're engaging the kind of conversations and depth of conversations and the multitude of conversations that that i've that i have been over the last 10 or 15 years of or, or whatever 20 years of my career and in the last three or four months um in particular uh, so you know I, I think some of it might come from i i grew up playing sports so i didn't grow up making theater at all and i i started i, I played mostly soccer and baseball but i played a lot of soccer soccer is really where i you know that's where i spent all my time so when I was, you know, four or five years old, I started playing and I played up through high school, but around like 12 or 13, I stopped being one of the top players on my team and started to have a different role. So instead of playing in the middle and having the ball at my feet a lot, I started playing more on the side and, and, uh, and playing not, not playing 90 minutes, but playing 60 minutes or 45 minutes. So I started to have an appreciation for the fact that it actually takes everybody. So it isn't just about the people with the ball at their feet. It isn't just about the people with the, you know, with the ball in their hand. It's about the people that get them there. It's about the people that are playing against them in practice. It's about the people that are able to take what the coach says and communicate it to the players. So all of that, you know, sort of forced me to deal with, and I think this kind of a special affinity I have for both athletes and, and uh, you know, for dancers is that, um, you know, I, I had to deal with a kind of, um, awareness of immortality when I was when I was very young in that in that in that instance because I wasn't the best anymore and if I wasn't the best anymore the thing that I'd identified myself I, you play soccer that's who I was and then that was taken away so who are you now and there's a saying that I think about a lot which is that the athlete dies twice the dancer dies twice mm -hmm. you die when you stop dancing and you and then you die at the end and so I've made a couple of things you know, along the way that deal with that. And one of the big questions of Fosse Verdon, really focusing more, you know, I think, you know, as he transitioned out and as it's at the end of Gwen's career, who are you when the thing that they say that you are is taken away and how you define yourself? So I'm interested in foregrounding those kinds of stories, not having them relegated. And so much of our business is about, I want to hear from you and I want to hear from you, but not from, not from, not from, not from, not from, not from. And the things that have been most interesting for me have been about trying to turn up volume uh, and, and amplify in, in places or in communities or with people that I find in, you know, intensely compelling who haven't always had a chance to, to have a platform. I mean, but what's, what's amazing about, you know, that in itself is like, you're talking about doing this in a medium you know, I, I just I was having a meeting about uh, you know we were talking about like Netflix and like the al like the algorithm that is Netflix. Netflix is literally when you're pitching a show to Netflix, it's like they're gonna take the buzzwords and this is nothing against Netflix, all up to Netflix, but they're gonna take the buzzwords of what you're pitching and they're gonna say, cool, x x x x x. We're gonna do the math. This is how many viewers you're gonna get off of that. So in a medium that is literally focused on, especially now, like getting getting it to the right demographic and making sure it hits and all this stuff. What you're talking about, as, as simple as you make that sound, is actually a very radical notion. It's, and it shouldn't be, I mean, it shouldn't be, but it is. And, and, and so the first place my brain goes to is like, have you experienced pushback and not without naming any names or anything like that, but like what, what, what are some of the challenges that you, with that as your vision, have had to overcome? Do you know what I mean? Like what are, what yeah. are some, of, or have there been any? Yes, I mean, one of the things that I'm sure many of the, the people uh, that are tuning in and that the two of you understand is that if you if you decide to make a life in the arts, you hear the word no a hundred times for every yes. And I have a theory that you don't usually hear yes, you hear maybe and you make it into a yes. Mm -hmm. Because what someone says is, okay, well, let me see. Or they don't lock the door, they just, you know, they just tell you that the door is unlocked, but you have to kind of get off your button and go and see if the door is, is actually, uh, something that can be open, but you you have to do it on your own. And so I think that that ethos, because I started 
making stuff with my friends, I, I surrounded myself with people who could do things I couldn't do and people that inherently and instinctively believed that we, that we had something to say. And so I was, you know, I was self-producing for the, you know, for so much of my early career or finding my peers who didn't have the same kind of institutional knowledge, which then creates an institutional resistance of what's acceptable, of, of, of what should be on stage versus what should, what should not be, you know, celebrated on stage. But, but yeah, like, and those early conversations, look, and a couple of the things that I've made, if I think about like freestyle in the Heights and Hamilton, the pitch in the elevator doesn't get that show sold. Mm. No, no one's going to, and at the time we were doing it, right? So I started freestyle in 2004, 2005. I started in the Heights around 2002 and in Hamilton in 2011. The, the one two sentence pitch of those, of, of those, you know, three very different shows, but related shows wasn't going to get a lot of people excited, but I didn't need a lot of people excited. I needed one person, two people, five people, you know, to say, okay, and here's some space. Okay, and here's someone else you should talk to. And, and, and so I, I was always, um, I, I heard like, uh, you know, I also heard people see the thing and, and I felt that it was, uh, that sometimes how they perceived it was not necessarily in sync with the authorial intent. These three things obviously are all th things I did with Lynn. And I remember early on with some of those in the Heights conversations with producers who we didn't end up working with, there was a lot of, confusion about the idea that there could be a story about a group of, uh, you know, of, you know, of Latinx folks living in a community where the girl comes home from college and it's not because she was pregnant. Wow. And like that, and like, that's like a story that got, that's a thing that got said. Well, what if this was actually, wow. you know, and, and obviously that was, that was something we had zero interest in in pursuing, but the, the, I think the difference now is if someone said that to me, I would feel compelled and impelled, you know, to, to to push back in the room. I think when, as a young artist, you know, you sort of say like you listen, and then you walk outside, and you're like, what just happened? Wow. Um, and the and the power that that we could exercise then was, well, we would never work with you, as opposed to calling it out in in the moment, which I think that's like that to me is like a big shift. Now it's about in the moments trying to engage in that conversation say why is that like why is that your thought what is that what what does that mean or, or and, and have that conversation um you know by the time we've made you know in the heights gave us a little bit of credibility so lynn had the idea for hamilton as we all know at some point during in the heights in 2009 and you know we had a relationship with with jeffrey and and it also was a different thing because within the heights we were knocking on lots of doors with this we felt like let's cook it mm. And and then see who you know puts their hand up as opposed to going and pitching the thing, uh, and so I find you know you know it's 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 really case by case. But I try to listen to the 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 author's intent and impulse, and my job is often just to remind them of of why we started telling the story, or why they decided telling the story, and then and then ask me to to collaborate with them because sometimes the, the further you get from the thing. And you both have, you know, made lots of stuff. Sometimes you forget why you started making it, and so my job is to be there, if I'm, especially if I'm early, and remind myself and remind us of of why we started making it, and find people along the way as you're as you're marching towards production that just want to help you get there and and aren't laying obstacles at your feet. That's like incredibly interesting to hear about, because I think as a person of color, like what we're saying is we're not in the room. So those things are said because we're not in the room. And so in light of like those, those conversations and, and even as a person, like you're saying like, well, I, I, I don't even know what to do in that. Like when I'm in this place as this young artist at this time, like the social climate has changed and you know, there's for so many like tragic reasons, but thank God. But like, how do you, I think one of the conversations we're having now in the industry is, is it enough for us to be seen on stage? And then how do we actually change the rooms so that the accountability in those rooms changes and the conversations that are allowed to be had in those rooms change? And I wonder if you have any um, thoughts um, or like in your own, I know you're doing so much like work, like just sitting and trying to figure out like how to be a part of that. And I don't, I'm wondering like where you are with that or what like you see, what you've observed happening and what you think like your role in that is. Yeah, you know, um, you know, my my role as a 
person who makes theater is so focused on my relationship to Hamilton. Um, so this during during a time when we weren't able to perform and we aren't able to perform for you know for for this stretch in front of us, it's a time for us to look at the the way that the you know the organism that we built was built. And part of the challenge we've had with uh, with Hamilton um, is is that it's it's been so relentless and it happened so fast that there were there were things that that we you know that we had that existed within the structure of of, of how the thing was made that might not have been a, either best practice or the best mode of communication or the you know and or or represented in in a way that was was as um was as connected to the story we were telling um and so it's a chance to assess that to see what kind of work can be done um during a pause before something resumes um you know it's hard for me to think about making any other theater except when there's this much work that needs to be done in the thing that I've already made. So that's where my theater brain goes. Like I, I don't, there's a couple other things that I imagine, you know, in, you know, in the theater and uh, that I've been working on, or, but, but I, I find that so much of whatever that theater part of my brain goes to is about that. When we have a chance to resume, how do we work to make the, um, the, all of the, all of the 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 work that's done on stage needs to be in some way a reflection of not just our audience, which we want to try to continue to figure out how to diversify um, and have to take you know more more activated steps to do so. Um, and we've been having a lot of conversations about that with with our crew, with you know what it, the, what it looks like backstage. And so there's a lot of um, real assessment and work to be done there. Uh, so that that's where i think a lot of my work continues um i think you know i have a i have a small production company for television and film um and nothing's happening this year except for development but that means there's also a chance to get ground floor systems in place um that feel like they're more again reflective of the worlds that we're trying to make um on stage uh, or on screen um so so i i find myself thinking a lot more about um, the how than the what. You know, mm -hmm. how did we how do we get here? How do we you know how do we arrive at this place? Um, and then who? And and to your point, uh, you know, as like this you know young you know this young Jewish director and this you know and my young friend you know uh, Puerto Rican and Mexican descent sitting in a room and hearing someone say that, you know, I'm a person who has a, a, you know inherited a lot of a tremendous amount of privilege, and I I didn't feel you know, a, a place brave enough or have enough in me strength to say something then. And so I can, you know, so I can only extrapolate from my own experience and think about what that must feel like, what that must, you know, and, and you know, and, as that kind of continues. And as someone who's now in a position of power, who has the opportunity to hire, I've always had, um, you know, I've always felt that this business sometimes rewards uh, or, or values talent over, over bad behavior. And so, mm -hmm. You know, and and that's something that I've been trying show by show by show mm -hmm. to to unmask and to unearth. You know, I have I have the belief that you can make things of high quality with with high caliber people and with harmony. Mm -hmm. the, the the idea that that great art is made from the cauldron of pain and this you know I think is a myth. I think it's a complete myth. Um, and so I want to try to address that, but also realize that I need to broaden my own scope in that and, and really have a conversation about as someone who has the opportunity to help assemble storytellers, both on stage and off, am, you know, how many, how many more opportunities uh, can be provided at, at every turn to try to have more voices in the room, uh, more voices in the room that are reflective and, you know, and, and, and can speak to the story that's being told. Yeah. No, all that's <clears throat> incredibly, yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the work that that's never going to end sadly, but also greatly, you know, everyone can keep contributing to that. And, and, you know, we are, it's, it's very, very inspiring to know that you are yeah. on that side of justice. And we also, we, we, we know you, we got to respect your time and we know, you know, you are a busy man, but we do have one thing or 10 things we want to ask you. So the way that we have been ending these is with James Lipton's 10 questions. 
Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did it. We did it. We did it with Lynn. C Jack did it, and he was C Jack was crazy. C Jack, there was a lot happening that day. But C Jack was crazy. He's <laughs> my friend Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, by the way, I just found out, this is a complete tangent, one of my aunties growing up is his actual relative. Had no idea. He, like, I literally, my aunt was like, yo, we're related, and I hooked them up, and now we're all family. Did that Which, happen on StreamYard? Yeah, it, did that happen it, in the 10 questions? It did not happen in the 10 questions, but it, it happened after. Do you have an aunt name? <laughs> <laughs> so if, are you, are you down? Can you, can you answer, are you cool to answer these 10 questions, the James Lipton, the James Lipton 10? I'm, I'm happy to try. And uh, and, and so let the internet tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Tommy Kale, what is your favorite word? Harmony. What is your least favorite word? Goodbye. Okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be a heavy one. <laughs> It's about to get real. Yeah. Uh, Where are you now, see Jack? Yeah, come for me now. <laughs> I'm just swinging truth over here. Just here. I'm here. open. I'm <laughs> open. Brene Brown's like, yeah. What what turns you on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. What? New. Some new. Yeah. What turns you off? Can this disaster be one word? It can be whatever. Ah, yeah. oh, this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what turns you off? I was like, constraints. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, people taking advantage of the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. in positions of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What sound or noise do you love? This one I now remember watching. It's like laughter. Um, <laughs> I do like the sound of people laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. What sound or noise do you hate? Crying. This is, I'm telling you, these, it's like the simplicity of it, but it's like, it just hits you. You're getting it. You, the whole time. Just. Yeah, this is real. <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? Oof. My favorite curse word, mm -hmm. I don't use it enough, is horseshit. And that's great when people are like, that is horse shit. And that, is a, <laughs> that is, right, it's like, it's associated with like a thing and there's like a smell to it. You know, I just feel like it's much- so good, you know, that's so good. Horse shit. It's like, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of tangibleness to that yeah. word. Story this to might it. be the only time all year that I've used it, but I do appreciate, I'm really happy when someone uses that. Yeah. Horse shit, love it. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Camp counselor. You camp direct you, camp director. I will I will do whatever I have to. I will build a camp for you to be a camp. Yeah, man, on a Tommy Kale camp. I actually think that is Kale camp. I mean, like I've just been doing this trying to get there. You know, what I mean? like this whole thing. It's Kale, Kale, Kale camp. camp. Kale camp. Yeah, yeah. Kale's I want to run it. Run it. I want to run it. I, I want to run the camp. And I, I and, think that is an excellent idea. Um, and I, I want, I'm gonna make sure that comes to fruition. Kale camp. Okay, okay. <laughs> it looked different when he saw it. When he saw it out there, it looked. Okay, okay. I, like, oh, I didn't realize. I didn't realize we were like in hashtags. Okay, okay. Um, what? Thank you. There, thank you. I knew, there was, I knew there was one person out there. Oh, you got one. You got one. Alex Blackham was here. <laughs> what profession would you least like to try? What What would you not want to do other than yours? I'm trying to think of something. I mean, like, there's like some stuff I'm really not good at. Um, and mm -hmm. so, like, I'm trying to, it was probably be that. Um, 
lifeguard. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody wants that. That's true. <laughs> that's a true. That's a true statement. Yeah. That's yeah. very. Yeah, that's very true. That. It's like, oh, and, I have a cramp. Like I have a cramp too. Like I can't swim. <laughs> I just see you like diving, like diving out of the situation, the way you like dive off of the stream yard when you panicked and couldn't figure out. The map. So now I was trying to reset it. I was trying to reset it. I was... <laughs> yeah, uh huh. I was hearing you, but I couldn't see anything. I was like, oh, this is not going to be a live chat. You're saying this to the kid gonna... who's like coughing up water on the side, just I'm hearing you, but I couldn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> Adult swim, everyone. Adult swim out of the pool. <laughs> out of the pool. Let's go. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> Oh, this is terrible. Uh, and the final question, of course, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? They're right inside. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got to sit down. I got to sit down. That's a Tom, these are, some, these are some damn good answers, boy. This is excellent. Hey, you know, so, some things happened for a reason, some things didn't, but I, apparently <laughs> I should have been an actor in the actor studio many, many years ago. <laughs> Although this feels pretty good. This feels, this feels more right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, feel, this, this is, feels the, more this right. is the container. Sir, you, Everybody's you, unfollowed you by the end of this. They're like, whoa. <laughs> like, sorry, 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 Nikki Walks. Unfollow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's that's been, one of my favorite things. Like when you're on like a big thing, like a big like email chain or text thread, and someone just says that a thing, you know, like they're just like not funny enough or something. It's, it's just unsubscribe. <laughs> I really, I do love writing an unsubscribe on a text thread. It's a good one. You have, written, you've written, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. It's great. Tommy, you're the you're the best man, and we we wish you the best. And you know, yeah, you, yeah. Just just keep being your amazing self, and you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll see you around or, at some point. Some some Wait, fashion this is, or isn't this every Wednesday? I, did I did I not read this right? Because I thought it was it's in my thing as like a repeat. Oh, it's every yeah. other. There's a rolling list. We'll send you the link every time you just pop on in. Okay. You, we actually you, you don't just don't turn the thing and be like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you give us a thumbs up when you're ready. We'll bring you along. And now Tommy Kale and he's jumps in. No, nope, we're still busting a sound. <laughs> well, I appreciate you both, and I'm very happy that you are united in doing this. So thank you for uh, for giving me a chance to hang out with you and okay. to have one person go to the summer camp. So we're almost there. It's like theater for one. There's a That's rolling right. list. I'm going to tell you, you got at least 10 solid campies in here. So. Yeah, Kale Camp, man. I'm telling you, it's going to take off. It's going to take camp. off. Yeah, send me a message after this is done. When, once it hits 4,000, then we'll start talking, okay? So, so uh, 2026, 4, let me know. <laughs> I'm gonna be disturbing. What are we doing at this camp? I don't know. That's a really big okay, number. In so camp. It's just a muni <laughs> all of a sudden. I'm like, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, that is enough of that is enough of your time wasted by my pretend camp. Um, uh, but thank you for for letting me hang out. And uh, do okay. ask Sasha about uh, the small business that we talked about opening uh, when we were thinking about uh, a little restaurant business that we could maybe collaborate on. I already don't like this. I forgot the joke. <laughs> there was a, we, we, there would often be a pun. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm so excited. Almost <laughs> forgot that one. I'm excited. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> uh, All right, sir. Oh my God, she's so much better than you, Nick. Anyway, bye. <laughs> Why does everyone <laughs> want to crap on me? Why am I that guy? I don't know, Nick, but we matched today. Black and white, or black. I didn't yeah. see the logo. We when both I have black shirts on. We both have I don't black know, Nick, I don't know, but it's the year of the woman. It, it, well, every year is the year of the woman, Sasha. You're right. But, but the fact that every single guest that we have had yeah. has made a point of saying that you are better than me in some way or another. Yeah. Do you mean, with maybe the exception of like Dominique, who like- Fair enough. She, just didn't, she didn't even have to say it. She just kind of, her presence implied it. Yeah, yeah, she knew. You know what I mean? She knew. I mean, she might be a little biased. I don't know. She might, you know, you and her showing all like I don't know. I don't know. That's a Whatever. maybe that was a tie. I'll give maybe that was a tie. There you go. See, I don't know. Laura's sending me love. That's all I right. I think Dominique is. I think Dominique is better than you. I I would agree. There's several people. The only person in this in this whole thing who's not better than me is Fergie Philippe. 
and you heard it here first. That's the only person. I'll give you Comro. I'll give you Jillian. I'll give you Javon. I'm not going to give you Fergie. Fergie, we're going to have a good time on that panel. <laughs> For sure. August 4th. Also, Nicole. Nicole DeRue. She's in here, too, somewhere. This one. Uh, you know, if you're because that's her thing. If you're going to crap on the whole world, everyone's going to crap on you back. I don't crap on the world, Nicole. He does. I crap on deserving people. Horseshit. And and when I crap, don't keep your mouth open. Do you know what I mean? Horseshit. <laughs> when it's crap, it's horseshit. It's great. It's great. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great episode. Um, we hope you have enjoyed uh, everything. Fergie, you're not telling a Portland story. There's no Portland story for you to tell. So don't worry about that. Fergie, you can add us. You can add us. You can add the Portland story at the Chaos Twins. Yeah, at the Chaos Twins. Get it on it. Uh, you know. Uh, but we will be back very soon. Um, <clears throat> possibility of a of an episode next week. We will let you know about that. Um, follow us. Fo follow us to to, to know. Um, and in the meantime, <clears throat> stay safe out there. Wear a mask. And uh, you know, just remember that no matter how bad things get, James Monroe Iglehart is always there for you. All, All right. right, guys. Love you. Oops, I didn't mean to do that one. Oh no, but Aaron needs to know who you are. Oh, we got yeah. Yeah, but also I was, trying, I was just trying to promo us. Yeah, follow us at the cast the cast twins on Instagram. Follow <laughs> us and it's gonna be Twitter. Follow us and we will keep you abreast of things. This is great. Sasha's got her plants in the background, they're doing well. Yeah, cornucopia. All right, y'all. See you soon. Bye. Bye.